the Pet and Teller Theater in Las Vegas, Nevada, here's our host, Jonathan Ross. Welcome to Pen and Teller Fool Us, a show with more smoke and mirrors than Snoop Dogg's dressing room. <laughs> Tonight we have some of the best illusionists in the world trying to earn a spot on Vegas' longest running magic show. To earn that prize, they have to fool the stars of that show and indeed this one as well. They've been working together for over 40 years, which makes them older than the combined age of One Direction. Will you please welcome <laughs> the fabulous Pen and Teller! The show can begin. Okay, let's get this started. Now it's time to meet our first potential fooler. I'm Jay Sankey, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. I think like a lot of illusionists, I'm a bit disillusioned, and I find that one of the best ways for me to get in touch with, you know, wonder and mystery and all that is teaching magic. If we don't share the real secrets with anybody, magic will be dead in a generation. And so that's when I really started producing instructional videos for my magic fans all over the world. I've also been really influenced by the surreal artists. People like uh, Magritte, Banksy, Salvador Dali. I think it would be great if everybody who watches this show ultimately is inspired to learn more about the art and science of magic. I also hope I don't die on stage. Will you please welcome Mr. Jay Sankey. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a treat to be here. Good evening. My name is Jay Sankey, and I've been lucky enough to be performing and creating magic for more than 30 years. And people often ask me, what are the influences behind the tricks where I get my inspiration? And I get it from everywhere. But one thing that has inspired a lot of my illusions over the years is the real magic of fire. I love fire. I love the way it looks. I love the way it smells. The way it tastes, maybe not so much. You know what? I learned that the hard way once. But fire can do so many really cool things. Here's a very simple example. We know that off the flame comes heat. And with heat, if I hold the pack over it, watch what happens. Just a, a little bit, a card will float right up out of the pack. Now, that's just a very simple example. Let's up the ante here. We're going to go from cards and cardboard to something to metal. And for this, I'm going to be using a stapler, or as we call it in Canada, a lethal weapon. Okay, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this in just a second. Now, how many people here, show of hands, how many people have ever seen, maybe in an old movie, a set table with a tablecloth and forks and knives and spoons and everything, and somebody yanks out the tablecloth and everything stays on? How many people? Yeah, of course. I'm going to try to do that now in a very kind of down-to-earth way. But instead of a tablecloth, I'm going to use a couple of cards. The cards I'm going to use are going to be the seven of hearts, okay? And I'm going to use the queen of clubs. I'm also going to use a dollar bill, all right? A dollar bill here. Now, I'm going to put the dollar bill between the two cards, and I'm going to do this very slowly, because I know magicians have a way of moving very quickly, and it's suspicious. I want you to see the bill is truly between the two, okay? To make it now, of course, if I try to pull the dollar bill out from between the two, it'd be easy now. But if I take the stapler and put a staple between all three, now it's going to be a lot harder. Jonathan, would you come over for a second? And if you can come on my right side, please. I think you're going to find it a slightly better view. Thank you so much. I know the people at the back. I know the people at the back, they can see everything, but of course they can't see the staple. So I'm going to have you help me out here. Would you please feel the staple? Is that a real staple? That is a real staple. Okay, now watch. A little heat. This is, again, the magic of fire. A little heat, and I'm hoping I'll be able to take the bill and... Just like that. Now look, are there any tears? There are no, any tears? There are no tears at all. And are these two cards, look at this, are they truly, examine that, even take your hands. They are, are they stapled they... together. They are okay. completely adjoined. A small miracle, thanks to fire, a small miracle. Now, let's take it a step further. I'm going to show you a card trick, but it's not a card trick. It looks like a card trick, but it's actually a public service announcement. It is. It, the announcement is very simple. It's simply this. Do not, when you're going to work out, always make sure you warm up before you work out. Now, do me a favor. Separate the two cards. Pull them apart. Pull them apart. This proves once again that they are... I need to work out more. <laughs> okay. There we go. There. And I'm going to actually remove the staple as well. Because I'm going to have the two cards for your entertainment pleasure. They're going to exercise together. Watch. Both cards, they go down, they touch their toes. Kind of weird, I know, I know. I'm a Canadian, what can I say? They go back, they touch their heels. They bend it half, kind of going cross-eyed, I guess, Jonathan, yeah. you could say. And back this way. Now, notice, they're working out, but they forgot to warm up. So this is the risk of uh, tearing muscles. Sometimes, even the risk, I don't like this part, of... Tearing ligaments. Now, my job as a magician, the way I see it, Jonathan, is to try to restore things, to put the pieces back together. So, look, I'm going to take a bunch of the pieces and I'm going to just heat them up a little bit there. And in fact, I'm also going to use some static electricity. Luckily, I've got enough hair on my arms like a baby gorilla. So, what I can do is hopefully take the pieces, take about half in each hand, rub a little bit there, a little bit there, and we should see that now, yes. The cards are still scarred and they're still hurt, but ladies and gentlemen, you can see both cards are now totally back together and completely 
examinable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Most kind. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Now, the last trick I'm going to do is a bit of a psychic connection between you and I. Well, I felt it. Okay. I know it didn't last very long. Sorry about that part. I know. I know. Say, so, and I'm going to use something that's kind of unusual. Along with the cards, I'm actually going to also use. I got it down here. Sorry. Where did I put that? Uh, oh, here it is here. It's a sparkler. Okay. Now, I don't know well, if you Where did you just pull this out of before I touch it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, so let's say somewhere in the back. We'll just leave it, leave it for you now. You've got to get it through custom somehow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. Don't even bring up the custom fish, please. I'm going to have them take a peek at a card. Now, very important. A lot of magicians do this. I want you to notice two things. Number one is the cards are all different. I want you to see that they're all different, my cards. It's a lot easier if they're the same card. A lot less practice, believe me. It really is. Okay, so look, I'm going to spread out the cards. Okay. I want you to touch anyone you want. Anyone? Just anyone, doesn't matter. Okay, how about that one there? Okay, now I'm not even going to remove the card from the pack. I'm going to leave it sticking out of the middle of the pack, and we're not going to take it out, but I'm going to ask you to take a quick peek. Okay. A quick peek at the card. Remember, keep it, it in mind. Okay, got it. Will you remember it? Yes. The suit, the yes. number, everything. Yes, all okay. of it. Okay, all, all of it. All remember the everything about that card. Now watch. Let's try this. I'm going to take the sparkler. He's thinking of a card. Yes. They were all different. Here we go. There we go. I know you want to sing happy birthday, right? You immediately want to sing. <laughs> but let's see. I'm going to try to find this card. I'm going to take and stick it right through. Oh, we're doing it. We're, yes, yes. Look. It's going through the middle of the deck, and I'm going to try to see if I can pull his one. It's burning. It's burning my fingers. It's right like this. Look, 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 look. Burnt. Burnt right through every card except for one card. One card. What was the card? The card was the Jack of Spades. You're sure? I'm pretty sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I found the Jack of Spades. Uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, you know how this goes, Jay? Pan and Tello are going to have a little chat. They're going to think about it. Am I right in thinking that some of the things we just saw you do aren't like your standard trick? They're things that you have invented. Yeah. Inventing is a... I mean, I love performing, but uh, ever since I was a very young kid, inventing uh, has been a big part of who I am. So, yeah, everything here is one of my original tricks. I'm not a big fan of sort of using other people's magic. If you were to fool Pan and Tello, what does that do to your standing? Well, it's super exciting. It's awesome. You go, well, I mean, these guys, yeah, they've seen it all. They've done it all. And they even have a show where, you know, they see so many magicians try. So, if you can pull it off, frankly, I think it might be a bit of a fluke. Okay. They have a consensus whether or not it's right. We now find out. Pen. Well, you know, uh, one of the things that magicians hardly ever bother doing, and it's it, it's to their detriment, is giving an overall theme. Just putting a candle in the middle of the table and saying this all has to do with fire is fabulous. Already we love you. Thank I think you know that we know uh, Rising Card, although you adding the candle to it is really, really nice. The staple thing of the bill between the cards, um, we saw... A little bit of larceny at the beginning of this that, <laughs> that helped you do that trick. I, I helped is maybe too weak a word. Had you do that trick. But it was beautiful. I, I love the fact that you created it. One of the things I love the most is I love how you look when you show off the hair on your arms. You know what I'm talking about. I, I love that very much. Uh, for the, for the, <laughs> is, is, this, is this a private moment? That we oh, it's, a private, yes. it's a nice pose, isn't it? He's being very gentle. You look very, very good when you pose like that. Thanks. It's very attractive, Thank especially you. the way you held it out just like this. Remember that? I try, brother. Yeah, I remember that. I yeah. try. Um, we have an idea that the Jedis were working with you on the, um, on the final sparkler trick. A little bit. And I'm so happy that I can say this on TV. But I'm very happy, and maybe other people in your life are too, with the way you masked the gash. Whoa. It was beautiful, Whoa. the way you masked the gash. Whoa, we loved the whole phrase. routine. It was really, really wonderful. Thank you. We don't feel anything completely fooled us, right. but boy, we loved you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. So, Jay, let me just check. You're fairly confident that the things that Penn said, culminating in you masking a gash, he's all above board. He knows what you did, right? And they busted you. Yeah, my sense is that he's totally in the ballpark, and I, it, it, you know, we could be more articulate, more specific. But my sense is, if Penn and Teller feel they're in the ballpark, they're probably in the ballpark. <laughs> they're probably right there in the diamond, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you to Jay Sankey thank for a great thank performance. You. Thank you. But you didn't manage to fool them. Thank you. Jay thank Sankey, you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. I'm going to make a prediction of my own right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for a commercial break, but we will, of course, be right back. Welcome back to Penn and Teller for Us, where magicians try to trick two of the all-time greats. Let's see if our next act is up to the task.
I'm Greg Wilson, and well, I literally grew up in the world of magic and show business. My mom and dad were the pioneers of magic on television back in the 60s and 70s, and I actually started performing when I was about six years old on TV. That was the debut performance of our son, Greg Wilson. Thank you very much. Of course, when I was younger, I wanted to be that, you know, the cutting-edge cool guy doing all the new hip new stuff. And then I realized that the classics are really cool. I'm taking the older art form of magic and the older style of wardrobe and whatnot and adapting it to the modern audience and giving it a little bit of a twist to make it fun and entertaining. magician is a second generation performer. His dad performed in a show called Magic of Alakazam, a wonderful place which I believe today we call Istanbul. Will you please welcome Mr. Greg Wilson. Hello, Penn. Hi, Taylor. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You. Uh, would you help me out by personalizing this handkerchief by putting your autograph or making some kind of mark that makes it unique, one of a kind? I'll be back and get it in a moment. Okay. I'm going to show you my favorite illusion. It was created by my father, Mark Wilson. Let me show you my personal version. Here we go. I saw that when you guys walked out the end, which was a lovely end, uh, Penn and Teller leapt to their feet. So these guys, you must have known their yes, work. Yes, of course. So fabulous to meet you both. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark and Nani. Off you go. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful. Mark and Nani, ladies and gentlemen. That went good. We were knocked out, weren't we, by that performance? The surprise at the end and then the other surprise. But how wonderful for you to grow up with your parents' image and then you go into it on your own as a career. Was it daunting at all, though, knowing you were following in their footsteps? Oh, certainly. So I would study different types of magic than what Dad was famous for. Yeah. So he was famous for doing card manipulation when he was a kid. So I studied the balls, like you saw in the video. Yeah, yeah. So you would deliberately mark out your own territory? I tried. Yeah. We're going to go to Pan and Teller. What do you think of the act, and did he fool you? Well, you know, 50 years ago, that trick on the magic land of Alakazam.
50 years ago he saw that trick. And 50 years ago, when he was young, <laughs> it fooled him absolutely completely. And there's a few things that we notice, you know, when you push a box that's a little bigger than maybe it needs to be, back against a curtain that's a little further away, and maybe there's a little extra time to sign, and we have done sword boxes before, and we've seen all sorts of ways to do sword boxes, and we know lots of ways that people have done tricks that are slightly inferior to this, and then at the end of a trick, you produce Mark Wilson and Naughty Darnell, two of the best logicians in the United States of America, and you expect us to say that we aren't fooled? <laughs> we are not going to do it. You pull those two people out of a cabinet, you have fooled us. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the big place. You'll be back here as part of Penn and Teller's stage show in Vegas. So, Greg, congratulations. Wow. Greg Wilson, well ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. 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 Congratulations. Hello, back to your chairs. Wow. We'll be right back with more amazing illusions and later in the show, just for you, a special performance from Penn and Teller. So, stay close. To fool us to show that foretells a great future for anyone with the crystal balls to take on Penn and Teller. Let's meet our next act and see if they've got what it takes. <laughs> Trey Watson and I live in Dallas, Texas. So my dad is a research scientist. My mom's an editor. I'm a magician. Go figure. So in college, I studied business and theater. I like to call that show business. As a performer, I'm inspired by other art forms, whether it be theater, music, even stand-up comedy. In order to be a good magician, I love to collaborate with other experts in other fields because that gives me new ideas. While a lot of magicians will buy magic effects, I like to build my own. As technology becomes more and more integrated with our everyday lives, I want to create magic with these everyday technology devices. So can I fool pen and tell her? <laughs> I'll certainly try my best. If magic doesn't work out for our next performer, then he can make a solid living as a stunt double for Neil Patrick Harris. Will you please welcome Trig Watson? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Penn Teller. A lot of people think that magicians on television use camera tricks. And in my case, they'd be right. I'll be performing an illusion that uses a camera, or rather, a camera app. I'm going to go to my tablet here and open up my camera app here. Here we go. Oh, that's Angry Birds. I was playing that earlier. Let me get rid of that and go to the camera app. Here we go. Are you ready? You know what you call this? It's an iPad. Get it? <laughs> Came up with that myself. See, the, the camera on the back here is really good about representing three-dimensional reality on a two-dimensional screen. I'd like to try and take something one step further by creating something in two dimensions and then bringing it into real life. Watch. I realize that the screen is a little small and I'm going to be doing something that involves a few more apps. So fortunately, I came prepared. I brought along with me my own personal phone. <laughs> yes, this is a smartphone. It's the 7 Plus. <laughs> Although in Penn's hands, it would be more of a two and a half. <laughs> what I'm about to do, I require a little bit of assistance and I thought, who better to help than our very own host, Mr. Jonathan Ross. My pleasure. Are you busy? Do you have a minute? I'm very busy? happy. Um, pleasure meeting you. Come help. take a seat right here. Please sit here. Okay. Take a seat. Yep. Down. Now, Jonathan, as host of Fool Us, I know that you've seen your fair share of card tricks. So today we'll be performing an app trick. I'm going to select one of these apps at random and place it over here on the microphone stand. That will serve as my prediction. Jonathan will then be choosing a random app from a similar set of apps right here. Hopefully, the app that Jonathan chooses at random will match my prediction. 
Now, if they don't match, Jonathan messed up. <laughs> now, Jonathan, I don't want you to see my prediction, all right, on the overall here on the, uh, on the prediction stand. So I am going to, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to blindfold you for the next few Please. minutes. Oh. I have a blindfold for you to wear. Go ahead and just slip that on for me, if you wouldn't mind. I'm open go. to new experiences. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Jonathan, I want you to know I have your complete comfort and customer satisfaction in mind. Relax. Take a break. Oh, Enjoy. Thanks. There you go. Feel free to take a nap. <laughs> Time for me to make my prediction. Let's go with... Let's see, I think we'll, we'll go with this one today. I want everyone to remember it. Commit it to memory. I'm going to place it over here in the stand. Now, Jonathan is going to be choosing a random app from this <laughs> set of apps. Uh, all different choices. Jonathan, Jonathan, you wake up now. Jonathan, wake up. It wasn't me. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, go ahead and remove your blindfold now, if you don't mind. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, Jonathan, I know that you're probably aware that some magicians at this point may try to make you choose a certain card, you know, try and force you to make a choice. I want you to know this is a completely free choice. Truly, pick an app, any app. Just any go ahead and reach in there. Yep. Don't look, just take it out. This one <laughs> That one right there. No, don't look at it yet. Just take it out. Perfect. Allow me to recap. I have chosen one app. What? Jonathan had a lot of different choices as well. We've got 24 apps here. Jonathan, I want you to now say the name of the app out loud. Angry Birds. <laughs> Susan, you want to look? Can I see? <laughs> uh, Angry Magician. <laughs> uh, just, just as well, because I may or may not have chosen Angry Birds as well. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, let's go uh, front and center here while Panatella deliberate and they talk about how you did what you did and when they know them. Let me ask you, I've never met a trig before. Oh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's funny. In school, math was my least favorite subject. It's a little bit ironic. Um, but it's, it's a Norwegian name. So it's a real name. It's not a nickname. It, no, it's literally my real name. It, it, it's interesting. The name trig in Norse means trustworthy and truthful, which is also ironic. Yeah. <laughs> so that the path was chosen for you. Yeah. I guess so. I think they've had long enough. Let's go over now to Panatella. Why don't we start with you, Pen? Okay. <laughs> Uh, great routine. Uh, we love, uh, love bringing, uh, bringing technology in. I don't know if you're old enough or lucky enough to have met Billy McComb. Never in person, but yeah. I'm a big fan. But we were very good friends. Terrific. Back in the 90s, we used the thing he did called the McComical Deck, which is what you're doing mostly here, yes. but a very magnetic version of it. <laughs> and you did a, uh, the double punchlines are always great in a magic trick to give one punchline that completely sells it and then turn it around the other way, bring out a failure. But the thing I like most about this, I think, is the fact that quick change is a really, really magical thing. And it's never used enough mm. in magic. And using a uh, principle of quick change in order to do a Another punchline on top of it was a wonderful thing. But I think we got all the, uh, all the details of what you did. And I like to see it as kind of a tribute to the great uh, Billy McComb, who, for those of you who don't know, is one of the greatest comedy magicians who ever lived. I hope I did him justice. But let me just check. What Peg said there, was that enough for you to accept that they do know what was going on up here? Yes, I think so. Okay. Well, you did it phenomenally. They know their stuff. Well, you were great. It was a great show, on it, ladies and gentlemen. Join me in saying thank you to Trig Watson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll have a raise. I want you to think of a car during this next commercial break, and when we come back, I will forget to ask you about it. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Fool Us, where magicians risk other people's lives and limbs, as well as their own self-esteem, in an attempt to fool Pan and Teller. Let's meet our next potential fooler. Hi, my name is Jen Kramer, and I live right here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. So when I went to Yale, I became a theater major, because they didn't have a major in witchcraft and wizardry. I figured Yale is basically Hogwarts. I'll join the Magic Society. And I show up on campus, and it turns out there wasn't a Magic Society. So I decided to start one, and I'm proud to say it's still going strong. So when I was 14 years old, I was dreaming of being in Las Vegas one day, of performing on a big stage. Now that I'm doing my show here, there will be girls who come up after the show and say, you know, I just, I never considered magic. But then I saw the show, and, you know, now I think magic is so cool. And that, to me, is so rewarding. I love that about magic. This next performer went to Yale, which is an adorable American version of real colleges like Oxford and Cambridge. Will you please welcome Jen Kramer. Hi, everyone. 
thank you so much for that warm welcome. It is wonderful to be here with you all. I did just graduate from Yale University, and uh, now I'm doing, oh, thank you, now I'm doing magic full time. Uh, or mom and dad, if you're watching, uh, I am a brain surgeon, just like I told you. I, I do these card tricks to keep my fingers nimble. <laughs> thank you. And I'd like to show you right now one of my all-time favorite card tricks. Jonathan, would you join me on stage? Let's hear it for Jonathan Ross, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jonathan. So great to meet you. Jonathan, I have a deck of cards here in random order. I'd like you to please take a look at that deck of cards all mixed up there. Okay. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to give you some very explicit instructions. I need you to do exactly what I tell you to do. Can you do that, Jonathan? I'll, I will try my best. Excellent. I know you can do it. You're married, right? You know yes, how to follow I mean, instructions. Yes. All right. Here's what we'll do. We'll uh, divide the cards so they're half and half-ish. You're going to take one half. I'm going to take one half. Which half would you like? Uh, this half. That half. Go for it. Give that half a shuffle, if you would. Really mix it up well there. More you got them however much you like. It's, it's up to you. Definitely you're all set. Shuffle. Great. Now I'm going to turn around so that I can't possibly see what you're doing, Jonathan. But what I would like you to do is please spread the cards out. You can see just like this. Yep. Spread the cards out so that you can see all of the options. Yep. And then I'd like you to think of any one of those cards that you see. Okay. But have you got one in mind? I've got most in my mind right now, but I'll, I'll go back to just one. Okay, I've changed it. I've got one in my mind. You've got one in your mind, and you'll remember that card. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> Terrific. All right, Jonathan, I'll, uh, I'll grab back the cards. We'll okay. shuffle them all together, in okay. fact. Okay. And uh, are you ready for your next instructions? Yes. You've been doing, you've been doing very well following Thank instructions you. so far. Make sure they're nice and mixed up. Would you hold out uh, your right-handed, yes? Would you hold out your, your left hand, actually, because I'm going to have you deal some cards. Okay. Terrific. Now, this is so that the cards are entirely out of my control right now, Jonathan. You've got the cards I right have there. The power. Now, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is please deal the cards face down onto my palm, okay. starting from the top of the deck until I say stop. All right, and by the way, now that the cards are completely out of my control, you can let everyone know what's the card you're just thinking of. I thought of the Eight of Diamonds. The Eight of Diamonds. Yes. All right, well, please go ahead and I'd like you to start dealing down cards there until I say stop. Oh, stop. It was quick, but it was good while it lasted. <laughs> I've, uh, I've heard that far too often in my life. Now, Jonathan, just to recap here for a moment, you looked at the cards, you were thinking in your mind of a single card, you shuffled the deck, you dealt the cards. Absolutely. Right here, the card you're thinking of, Jonathan? The Eight of Diamonds. Eight of Diamonds, let's see how he did. Go for it. Wow. No idea how that because I had hold of them all the time there. So can I tell them to talk and work out if they can work out how you did that? I was kind of on top of it. I couldn't see anything. I had no idea. Let me ask you about your schooling bit though. You speak uh, four languages, is that right? I do. What are those yeah. languages? I speak English, uh, French, Spanish, and Swahili. Wow. Well, I can see why you'd want to learn some of them, but why French? <laughs> Speaks that language. Yeah, that's crazy. And what, what, what's the um, situation for you? Being a woman in magic, what are the advantages sure. and what are the disadvantages of that? You know, I think there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, advantages being that I guess you, you sort of stand out just by nature of being a woman. Uh, disadvantages uh, also being that things can be a little bit more challenging. You know, the, the magic books are written for uh, for men in men's clothing and, and that type of thing. Yeah, I guess because so. if you're wearing a big jacket, then you could conceal right. stuff more easily than coming out with bare sleeves. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, well, I think they're ready now. They've deliberated long enough. Pen? Well, you know, the temptation, because women in magic are so rare, is to talk about how refreshing it is to see someone with a couple of X chromosomes up there. But um, <laughs> I don't think that's the most interesting thing about this. The most interesting thing about this is not your gender, but rather that uh, what you did is a trick, and the audience probably can't tell the difference. What you did as a trick was predominantly intellectual. And a lot of the people that come out here and do tricks, it's finger flinging, it's, it's what I would call juggling. It's a huge amount of physical practice. Yeah. What you were doing there is a huge amount of mental practice. As a matter of fact, when you got to the place when you had to do a shuffle that, uh, well, you had to do your shuffle, yes. uh, you could see that, the, that your handling of the cards was not as smooth as your handling of your mind. I'm going to say a couple of names to you. There's a great Spanish magician named Juan uh, yes. Tamariz, and there's another great Chicago magician named Aronson, yeah. and I bet that either of those two guys have a pretty good idea of the capacity you had. And I want to tell you, my favorite kinds of card tricks use this technique because I love it when it's up here instead of here. Okay. You had a pretty good idea? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but I'm assuming that that kind of, the codes and the names mentioned there, that's enough for you to believe that they know what you were doing? It was all done up here, Jonathan, all done up here. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was so good to work with, because nothing was done <laughs> up here. You were fantastic. It blew us all away for sure, even if you didn't fall on. Jen was wonderful, wasn't she? Jen Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. That was fabulous. Jen Taylor. Thank you, Jen. Well, our 
full as a finish, but we are not. The best is yet to come because we still have an amazing trick in store for you from our legends, Penn and Teller. So stick around. <laughs> Tonight, I feel confident saying our final one is, without a doubt, our most famous and definitely our best looking. It's also their show, so they may or may not have made me say that last <laughs> part. Okay, it's time to see them do a trick. Ladies and gentlemen, go crazy for Penn and Teller! We'd like to, uh, we'd like to address a classic of magic, or actually the classic of magic. As a matter of fact, it's the cliché of magic. It's a cliché that when someone does something impossible, they've pulled a rabbit out of their hat. And it is the, uh, it is the icon of magic to have a 19th century magician with a top hat and a wand, a little tap, and a live rabbit coming out. And every magician does this. We have, well, every magician we've had out here is part of their routine. They will pull a rabbit out of their hat. Every birthday party magician you see, every backyard magician, every magician on Broadway or on the strip, no. No. It's a really rare trick. It's the cliche of magic, and yet I may see more magic than you, and I've never seen it. Everyone's seen it. Tell us he's more magic than I do. He's never seen it. Either. You've never seen that simple trick of a top hat, a wand, a couple of taps, and out of there comes a live rabbit. There's a few reasons you haven't seen it. One is it's become an anachronism. In the 19th century, when this became a cliche, many men wore uh, top hats in the theater. They're called opera hats. They fold up to go into the seat. But now it's very, very rare to see a man or a woman wearing a top hat in 21st century Las Vegas. Maybe when there's cosplay in town or, or maybe there's somebody who's uh, into steampunk, we'll see one or two. Most of you see a cowboy hat now and again and a, a baseball hat or a cap. I'm just going to loan this to you, if I may. And just, you know, you make sure you fold it up, open it up, fold it up, open it up, put it on your head, kind of make it your own for a little while. I'm loaning it to you right here. So uh, since they can't borrow a top hat, they'll use something else. They'll use what magicians call a silk, which is really just a, a handkerchief. They can do a lot of routines with those. There's a lot of magic developed for this. And they'll have a uh, picture of a top hat on a silk, and they'll, they'll pull out a rabbit. But it's a rabbit pulled out of a picture of a top hat, not a top hat. It's also not a uh, real rabbit. This one's called a kicker. It's sold in magic stores, uh, very expensive. It's a spring covered in fur, and if you puppeteer it properly, which Teller does, at least in the long shot, kind of looks like a, uh, like a real rabbit. It makes the magic much easier, because you can compress this. You can kind of palm it. You can also hide it up your sleeve. It's easier to handle this. And it also deals with another problem, another anachronism, which is in the 19th century, we didn't really care very much how animals were treated. But the sphere of compassion for humanity has grown. In the 21st century, we insist magicians and audiences alike, that uh, life is treated with compassion, dignity, and respect. So it makes it really hard to do the rabbit out of the hat trick. Does anybody here have a top hat? Anybody have a top hat in the audience? Is there a top hat? Uh, you, you have a top hat. Can you go up here, please? Right up here, yeah. Bring your top hat with you right up here, please. Thank you so much. What is your name, please? Oh, look, my name is Ken. This is, uh, this is Teller right here. Cat. And Cat, take a look at that top hat. Huh? May I borrow the top hat back for a moment, please? Cat, thank you so much. And now, uh, Cat, did you get a chance to fold it up like this? I did. And you open it up like that and did all that? Did you look around on the inside? Yeah. It's completely empty. Because I'm going to show this to the camera, but it's black on black. So I take a magic wand. Here's the trick that you wanted to see, the cliche. Borrowed top hat. Borrowed from Cat. A couple of taps right here. Circular gesture. And then out of that top hat comes a line. You can touch it. That's, that's all that wants it. Wassy the rabbit right there. Wassy. Say hi to Wassy. Is that a real rabbit right there? It is. There it is. The classic of magic. A live rabbit out of a borrowed top hat. Thank you so much, Cat. Right there. Watch your step right back there. That is our rabbit, Wassy. Wasn't that great, ladies and gentlemen? Pen and Teller. Phenomenal close to the show. And that's it. Join us next week when we see who else can trick the magnificent Pen and Teller. See you then.